All right, Bobcat fans, we are here inside the halls of Hallsville ISD. This segment sponsored by Roofmasters and Bubba's 33 in Longview, Texas. Our guest today is Mr. Kevin Osborne. Mr. Osborne, how are you, man? Good, how are y'all? Well, well, pistol, Pete, pistol Pete number 89. Pistol Pete, pistol Pete number 89. Now, I, I, I'm going to go back to that because I actually have some questions on that. But we're here, ag mechanics teacher. So how many actual classes do you teach? I teach four classes a day of ag mechanics. And how many students, roughly, do you, are you over ballpark-wise? I'm over about 130. Between the A and B schedule, I run 130 through the class each day. And so well, they I start, guess every two days. Okay. So they start as a freshman? Uh, start as a sophomore. Okay. The, the freshman class is the principles of ag, just a foundational ag class. And then the uh, their sophomore year, they can get into the introductory class. And then junior, senior, they progress on to a double-blocked. So they don't walk out there striking an arc right off the bat. No, we got to start. We got to start from the bottom. <laughs> Did, is it a lot of what you're doing, like safety precautions and everything? Safety, just kind of getting the foundation, because everybody runs a, a shop or a job site different than than what I would or what you guys would. So I try to teach them just a little bit of everything, so they can have that skill set to go to a job site and be able to adapt to how you would run it compared to how guy would run it. That way, they're just proficient in everything. I can tell you this. I've been down in his his ag shop. The kids that they, they're safe. They they they're prepared. They have their PPE on. It's the shop is clean. You you teach them real life experience. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 when they leave your class after they graduate, what what qualifications and certifications can they get? Uh, they can get some welding certifications, uh, D nine one and D one one. I just finished those up. Those again. This just kind of depends on what you're doing because everybody runs a different program. But it still gets them that ability to set up a uh, certification or a uh, weld test so they can go to a shop and say, hey, I need to do a weld test, and then they can go in and get their uh, test for that job site because each job site has different right. weld tests. So how many – I know you, you've been here several years now. How many competitions this year have we, have we went to? Uh, we went to the four majors and then Farm City Week and uh, – Harvest Festival, which are two county shows. And then I try to hit a few welding contests in between just to kind of mimic a real-world working environment. So how many how many of them contests have we won this year? Quite a few. Okay. Yeah, well, and I won it. He's we... home. He can't count more than two or four. <laughs> I mean, there you go. Got a trophy case out there. <laughs> now, you, you do also, we talked to him earlier, you've got the – you had the Houston Livestock Grand Champion of Show – you know, have you ever had a winner like that before? No, we've won a few county shows. We've won a few welding contests. But to, to win Houston is, is a big deal. He also got reserve grand champion at uh, San, Angel, San Antonio the couple weeks before. So back-to-back -back having two of the highest placings in the state is a pretty big accomplishment for him. Well, that puts Halls on the map. And and it's you're among the, the giants there. I mean, it's tough to place at a major show, but it's also really tough to win a division – and it's pretty dang hard to win your, win the entire show. And I think the Houston show has been going on for 40 or 50 years. So out of the state of Texas, he's one of 50-ish. Do you think you were more excited or he was more excited when it happened? Well, we were just sitting there talking, and then they called uh, the replacement hay hauling bed for grand champion, and we kind of looked around, and he stood up, and I think he just cleared the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> and he ran down there, and, I mean, just they're hounding me with, you know, awards and buckles and, it's just like drinking from a fire hydrant. And the whole time he's just – he's shaking really, really bad just from adrenaline. And I don't blame him. I mean, it was exciting to be there. But it's just – for somebody to experience that, it was a lot of fun. That is cool. So he got a real cool-looking belt buckle. Did they give you a belt buckle also? I also got one. Yeah, oh, I like it. That yeah. is pretty cool. But you you, you you don't have yours on or, or, or the belly hang, kind of I, I don't want to get it scratched up at work. So that's my <laughs> that's my Sunday going to town belt buckle. <laughs> Sunday going to town belt buckle. All right, let's 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 talk about it. <coughs> Pistol Pete, how many years was you Pistol Pete? I did it for two years. And in those two years I did, I was on track for 800 appearances in two years. 800? Now, how do you how does one get to be Pistol Pete? So was it a competition? Uh, it's just an interview and tryout process. But I started doing that when I was like five and six. My grandpa worked at Oklahoma State, so I was always around it. And then I started like watching Pistol Pete and talking to Pistol Pete's and then – Tried out my senior year of high school and continued on until I got it. Is there a Pistol Pete alumni? And I'm actually being serious when I ask this. Yeah, there is a Pistol Pete alumni. We're trying to make it a bigger deal. We're just trying to gain traction. It's in its early, early stages. We just kind of started a couple of years ago. 
I'm in charge of the like the apparel committee, so I come up with t-shirt designs and hats and get all the embroidery done, take all the orders. We've got uh, like a hang your hat committee where the alumni can go do uh, like outreach programs. Like we just had a Remember the Ten run a couple weeks ago. I guess it was last weekend where okay. they had a marathon and a 5K that some Pete's ran and helped volunteer at to honor some people at our college who were uh, lost in a plane crash. So I have seen with actual pictures this man in full pistol Pete with the big head doing a cartwheel at, in front of your hay farm. Mm -hmm. So I, you still have the costume. I've got everything but the head. There's only four heads in existence, and two of them are carbon fiber, two of them are fiberglass. And they're, ask, ask him how much them heads cost. They were insured at one point for 25000 apiece. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, we got to get a, head, a pistol Pete head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know it, uh, Mr. Osborne is every year for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, thank you for joining us, Mr. Osborne. What you're doing with your students is amazing, man. It's uh, mm -hmm. awesome to see Hallsville Ag. Oh yeah, he's growing, a great job, developing the way it is. Fans at home, inside the halls of Hallsville ISD. We'll see y'all next time.